The Germans' new Panther KF-51 tank is the successor to a World War II legend. Germany has unveiled its first main battle tank in more than 40 years. Could it outmatch every other tank in the world? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced battle tanks at present. So stay with us until the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell symbol so that you don't miss out on any of our wonderful videos in the future. And let's begin! The KF-51, also known as the Panther, is brimming with new technology, including a larger main gun, a digital computer backbone, and a comprehensive defensive suite. The Panther can even counter so-called top attack munitions, such as the American-made Javelin missile, which is decimating Putin's army in Ukraine. The Panther is a truly software-defined tank that can collect and disseminate information across multiple domains on the battlefield. Forces can operate in collaborative combat environments, such as cross-platform sensor-to-shooter links, thanks to the deep integration of modern BMS and software-defined communication systems. The Panther is intended to command unmanned aerial vehicles, such as onboard or offboard drones, loitering ammunition, and a variety of unmanned ground vehicles. The fully digitized system and shared crew stations enable true human-machine teaming and control of wingman UGVs capable of platoon-level air and drone defense. Rheinmetall, a German arms manufacturer, unveiled the KF-51 Panther at France's Eurosatory Arms Show. Every two years, the show serves as a showcase for Europe's arms manufacturers to promote their latest equipment. Rheinmetall unveiled the Panther, which features a gray, black, and neon yellow digital camouflage pattern. Panther is a well-known name, and for good reason. In 1942, the Panzerkampfwagen V, also known as the Panther, was designed to counter Russian tanks such as the T-34 medium tank. The Panther was one of the best tanks in the war, but it was plagued by mechanical and reliability problems. The Panther first saw action in the Battle of Kursk in 1943, and it saw action on both the eastern and western fronts, including D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge. The KF-51 is the Leopard II's successor, and it is a contemporary of the American M1 Abrams tank. The Leopard II first appeared in the early 1980s and is still in service with a number of armies around the world. For decades, the Leopard II has been steadily upgraded, with the most recent version being the German Army's Leopard 2A7. Unfortunately, as with many upgraded systems, it eventually becomes impractical to keep adding new features to the old system. The only way forward is to create something entirely new. Panther is the name of the new tank. It appears to use the Leopard 2's basic hull design, though the shape of the hull suggests newer, thicker armor along the front and sides. The Panther retains the Leopard 2's engine compartment lines, but with a noticeable bulge. Despite this, the Panther is said to have the same 1100 kilowatt, 1500 horsepower engine as the Leopard 2, so there may not be much of a difference in the power pack. The turret on the Panther is larger, with sharper angles and a much larger overhang over the engine compartment, which serves to store larger, heavier main gun ammunition, as well as act as a counterweight to the new 130 millimeter main gun. The KF-51 is the first production tank to be equipped with a 130 millimeter main gun, a departure from the current standard of 120 millimeters. Although the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO countries, particularly the US, Germany and France, experimented with larger 130 millimeter caliber weapons in the 1990s, the end of the Cold War and relatively good relations with Russia rendered this unnecessary. The future gun system is a direct response to the new Russian T-14 Armada tank, which was unveiled in 2015. Rheinmetall claims that the FGS has a 50% longer kill range than older 120mm guns. The new gun is a 130mm L52 gun, which means the barrel length is 52 times the diameter of the barrel, according to ES&T. This equates to 6760mm or 22.1 feet in length. The barrel also has a futuristic-looking shroud, but it's unclear how it contributes to the tank's efficiency or effectiveness. The main gun on the KF-51, like the Leopard 2, is an autoloader. As a result, the tank commander, gunner, and driver form a three-man crew. Unlike the American M1 Abrams tank, which employs a human loader rather than an autoloader, resulting in a crew of four. According to Rheinmetall, the KF-51 has room for a fourth crewman to serve as either a company-level commander or a drone operator. A 12.7mm 50 caliber coaxial machine gun is mounted next to the main gun on the KF-51. This is a larger and heavier gun than older tanks' coaxial machine guns, which typically mount a 7.62mm machine gun. The larger machine gun allows the gunner to engage softer, less protected targets 
like trucks, light armored vehicles, artillery pieces, and ground troops without wasting 130mm gun rounds on less protected targets. A number of other new features are available on the Panther. The tank has outward-facing digital cameras that provide the crew with 360-degree visibility without exposing them to enemy fire. From inside the tank, a second 7.62mm machine gun can be remotely operated to target drones and ground targets. The KF-51 has four reconnaissance quadcopters that can be launched from the turret, allowing the tanks to conduct their own local reconnaissance. The turret houses a drone launcher capable of launching four Hero 120 loitering munitions. The Israeli-made Hero 120 has a flight time of 60 minutes and a warhead weighing 9 pounds. Panther tanks will be able to engage targets beyond the lines of sight, such as behind hills and tree lines, thanks to Hero 120. Top attack weapons such as the Swedish Next Generation Light Anti-Armor Weapon, or NLAW, and the American Javelin have proven lethal in Ukraine, firing an explosive charge into a tank's thin roof armor. Most Western tanks are vulnerable in this way, and Panther's top attack defense system is the first known system devoted to dealing with top attack weapons. It's unclear how the new defense system works, but rumors suggest that quadcopters will move to intercept incoming rockets and missiles. One of the most intriguing aspects of KF-51 is that it weighs only 59 tons. This is a slim tank by modern standards, and it will be agile and quick. The latest M1 Abrams weighs 73.6 tons without features such as a larger gun, loitering munitions, or drones. According to Rheinmetall, the tank is protected by active defenses that are capable to shoot down incoming anti-tank rockets and missiles. Reactive defenses such as explosive tiles that deform a molten anti-tank shaped charge and passive defenses like steel composite armor. KF-51 could rely more heavily on lighter active and reactive defenses rather than heavier passive defenses, reducing overall vehicle weight. It is designed with workstations that are unrivaled in their integration based on the needs of the crew. The Panther is designed for a three-person crew, allowing it to support future force structures with fewer soldiers. In the chassis, there are two crew stations, one for the driver and an optional station for a company commander, a drone operator, or a wingman pilot. The Panther introduces a completely new MBT concept, one that is not constrained by current MBT considerations. It is built from the ground up to be easily updated and outfitted with the latest capabilities and features. The NGVA modular open system architecture enables spiral development that can be updated on a regular basis to keep up with innovation cycles. The Panther is the first in a new family of MBTs. In the near future, there will be additional innovations to support environmentally friendly peacetime operations as well as further automation and effectiveness optimization. The big question is whether a new tank like the KF-51 is needed. Russia's armored forces failed miserably in their invasion of Ukraine, with outdated tanks and poorly trained crews. Russia's tank corps has been severely depleted, and it now poses less of a threat than ever. However, the KF-51's new, innovative features and larger gun are superior to what the West's current crop of tanks, developed in the 1970s and 1980s, can bring to the battlefield. Overmatching the threat is a safe bet but it is costly. That's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you We'll catch up in the following video.